I'd like to talk a little bit about how I've arranged my workspace. Uh, and, and this works really well for me as I primarily make smaller pieces. Uh, and so I need to be able to work from forge to anvil, incorporate a bunch of small tools. And, um, and this arrangement, like I said, is, is pretty convenient. So the main sort of relationship is between the forge and the anvil. I think the anvil ought to be set up so that you can reach for the hammer with one hand and the work with the other and go right to the anvil and be ready to work instantly. So that means several things. The anvil and the forge have to be close enough to do that. Uh, and I've also set them up, since I'm left-handed, I'm reaching with my right hand for the work and left hand for the hammer. And I've set up the anvil also for my left-handed orientation. So in my case, when I'm facing the anvil, the horn is pointing towards my right hand or tong hand. And that's just the way I've always used these tools. Um, it, it can vary from one person to another. I am a strong advocate for setting up the tools in a, in a sort of a permanent location. So I know there, uh, that some people like moving the anvil around, but I find there's a great advantage in having it in one spot and always knowing exactly where it is, even when you're not looking. So I can have two hands in the, in the work, get right to the anvil and be ready to work without having to watch where I'm going or look to see where the tools are. So I always leave the hammer in the same spot on the anvil. It's always there when I need it. I can find it without looking. The other tools I have that are set up around these two are uh, water. You can see my, my exotic water tub here under the forge where it really doesn't take up much room. And I have a helper for long bar in case I need to position something that doesn't set on the forge all by itself. I have tongs, all the anvil tools that I'll need, the blower switch. Um, all of that's within a sort of one step reach. And then on the other side, I have a table with lots of tools as well. Various top tools, punches, drifts, bolsters, uh, a rule, just about anything small I'll need. And, and uh, in the course of a heat, uh, often the projects I'm working on, I'll need six or eight tools in one heat or another. And so they can all lay on the, on the, the table here as well. Again, all of this is within one step, in one direction or the other. So it, you don't have to walk across the room to get things that are needed. Um, and so that's pretty much the layout that I use. Uh, I would say one more thing about lighting, um, and that is the ideal is to have light coming straight at you across the anvil. So if you were to set this up in your own shop, Ideally, you would set up the anvil so that you're looking across the anvil at a window or a door. And that will give you the best reading on the shape that you're forging. So other than that, um, there's, a, there's really a lot of flexibility. So I hope that's helped. Uh, let's look around the shop for a few other things. Let's look at my bench and, and the tools I have here. The bench and all of its layout is really important to me since much of my work involves filing, assembly, fitting, cold adjustment, uh, as, as is really typical of 18th century small iron work. So I spend as much time here at the bench as I do at the anvil in, in many cases. So first of all, I have a fairly large bench with lots of open space, and that's really important for laying out tools, 
the work at hand, projects like a lock that, that may involve 20 or 30 parts, there's room to lay all those out. And the positioning of the bench is really important. You can see that I've set up the bench and the vise with lots of window light coming across them. And that's really helpful in filing and assembly. Uh, this light coming in through the windows is much more effective than overhead light at, at actually highlighting the shape of the surface you're working on. So the light from the window shows shadows due to ripples in the surface and that's really what helps you see when things are flat enough or smooth enough or uniform enough. So the irregularities become highlighted by this horizontal light, much, much more so than they would by overhead light. So I've got the vise, like I say, set up to take advantage of all of that incoming light from the windows. Uh, many historic shops are set up so that the windows face north, and that gives you the most even light through the course of the day. I wasn't able to do that here in my shop. My windows face south, which uh, gives me often too much light, and so I need shades on the windows at some times of the year or some times of the day to keep direct light off of the vise and off of the bench. But north-facing windows are really ideal. So here on the bench, I have most of the tools that I need on a regular basis. I have, first of all, the bench anvil. The bench anvil is something that shows up in a number of historic books on shop layout. And it's used just as it's called for adjusting, for riveting, for straightening, for, for fine-tuning the work cold here at the bench. And this kind of hornless anvil was pretty commonly illustrated in early books that show sort of the finishing area in blacksmith shops. Also have punches and compasses and small files. I have a variety of chisels, various punches for making holes. I have pliers, uh, compasses again, uh, rules. Um, and then files, of course. Files are the tool that I use at the bench most often. They should be stored so that they don't touch each other. And uh, that's one reason I like a wooden bench also, is that the files can bang against the bench top without being dulled or degraded. So the file storage is, uh, in my shop, is open like this, but files stored in a drawer or in a cabinet would be very good as well, as long as they're not stacked one on top of each other. That probably concludes most of the really important details of this bench. Uh, and luckily I have the space to lay out a good size bench. This one is 12 feet long and about 30 inches deep. That concludes my quick shop bench tour. Thanks for coming to take a look.